Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl, Andrea Griffin Rogers, prophetess for the Lord. And he gave me a word today for somebody out there. I know it's for me, but then he told me to get on here and release it to you. So whoever you are, receive it, baby, receive it. Your call is bigger than your fall. Your call is bigger than your fall. So many times we feel like, man, I messed up too much. Can God still use me if I made that mistake or, or, or if I misspoke or misdid this or made a, a misstep or or third, I thought I heard God correctly, but it turned out to be the enemy all along or I thought this was God this time for this opportunity or or this this deal or this relationship and it turned out not to be God. Can God still turn something into from out of nothing? And he can. He absolutely can. Your call is bigger than your fall. It doesn't matter what mistakes you make. He already knew you were going to make those mistakes. Hear ye, hear me. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. It also says it again, and I think it's in Psalms 139 or 136. Go check it out. It's in one of them where it says, he knew you before you were ever formed your mother's womb. He created you delicately and and, and 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 created you in such a way that he looked at his work and said, you are a marvelous work. He looked at you and said, it is good. And so it doesn't matter how far you fall. You can still call on Jesus and he will catch you. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you make. If he declared a work over your life, if he declared a purpose that he wants fulfilled in your life, as long as you have breath in your body, then that means you have time for it to be fulfilled. Baby, I wasn't even planning on coming on here today, but I believe that there's somebody out there that need to receive this word. No matter what day or time you, you get it, it was an on-time word for you because I just came from my prayer walk when he was talking to me about this. And and interestingly enough, it he was speaking to me actually like a continuation from a vision he gave me uh, this morning that I'm going to share with you in a moment. But um, you know, overnight sleeping, he gave me a vision, and and I remember in the vision uh, that I'll share with you in a moment, I had made a misstep, a, a misjudgment, if you will, and so I thought, oh man, like. Dang, that's not who I who I thought it was. But thankfully, I, I just began to pray in that moment. And and God, like, like the Bible says to repent, to turn away from the way you were going. And so thankfully in the vision, there was like a turning away point that happened real quick when I realized, oh, wait a minute, I misjudged that character. I misjudged that person. That's not who I thought they were. That's not God's best for me. That's not who God sent for me. That's actually the enemy. And he came and he shifted it. So let me get to the vision for you. And then I'll get to some scriptures that he gave me um, that correspond with the vision and that also, um, you know, are there to encourage you. And so this vision this morning started um, with me, um, with me walking down a street. I'm walk. It looks like I'm in in the park. Actually, you know where I was just at taking my prayer walk. But um, it looks like I'm there, but it's the the scene is slightly different. And I have some family members with me. And as I'm walking, we cross the street. So we park on one side. We cross the street to the other side, where um, there's a a, a line of trees and grass. Um, you know, lined up on that particular path. And I encounter two people. That I somehow know, even though I have never met these people before. And I'm like, hey, hey, we're just kikiing and embracing each other like, like old school girlfriends. And so we are chit-chatting up a storm. And I introduce them to my family members that are with me. And so they then go and hug my family members. And then all of a sudden, as we're all just embracing and hugging, because it's about four of us in this group, then like more people come. And as I'm realizing, like, more people are, are, are coming in for a hug, and I'm like, okay, and I'm hugging. And then I look back. Like, you know how you, sit, you know, kind of put your head back a little bit to see who you hugging or whatever? You're like, oh, oh. And I realized that it's former friends from my past that are, and I'm not going to say their names, but that are coming in to introduce themselves to my new friends. And they are 
giving me a hug as well. And it was like, okay, I'm now I'm really, fo- you know, trying to figure out what is going on because why y'all here? <laughs> you know, these are people who I won't I won't say abandon me when things got tough, but I would just say they had to fall off. They they got a little tired, a little weary. They couldn't go on this journey with me. And so they had to fall off. And so I'm surprised to see them like come back and wanting to embrace me, um, especially because of the way they fell off, which wasn't the right way. You, you know what I'm saying? So again, I don't want to speak bad or ill on them because God will deal with them. But the way they handled me wasn't fair and it wasn't the correct way to handle somebody who's already going through a broken situation. So nevertheless, I'm still embracing them, giving them a hug. Oh, hey, how you doing? Nice to, you know, nice to see you. I, I hope everything's been well with you. Um, And then as we're all hugging, then some other family members come up. And so I'm like, okay, so it's, now, it's a big group of us now at this point because my family is really big. So it's a big group of us at this point. And we're hugging, we're chit-chatting or whatever. And um, somehow we're we're also walking and making our way to this room that then leads to these stairs that that leads up. It's like these limestone, um, ancient worldly stairs. And the reason I say ancient worldly is because they like I've only seen stones like that in the Middle East and Jerusalem and places like that. And so it's these limestone stairs that lead up to this bright, bright. I don't even know what's up there, but I know it's something that we all want to get to, and we're excited to get there um, because we know it's going to be fun. And we know it's going to be amazing. And there's other, there's a few other people as well that's coming into this particular room to climb these stairs as well. And so as I'm climbing these stairs with my my girlfriends, we're just, you know the the new girlfriends, we're just chit chatting up a storm. I realized that the people that 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 came along afterwards, some of my family members and some of those old friends, they're not going up now. Some of them for some reason just can't go. I don't know why, but it's like they are they're stopped. Like there's a barrier there where they can't even cross the threshold to enter to that door. But then there's some of them that we start going up and then they kind of get scared or they kind of get worried about irrelevant things. Like one person I lied to you not was like, oh no, but I have a hair appointment. And, and I was trying to figure out, are you kidding me? That 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 shouldn't even matter right now. We're going to something that is glorious up ahead and you worried about your hair. And it's like, no, 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 I'm not ready for that yet. Like, I, give me some more time and then I'll be ready. And, I, and so I'm like, okay, so I, for some reason, I wave my my new friends away. I wave them away by, and so my my two new girlfriends, um, they go up the steps and, and they say, all right, well, we'll see you inside. And I'm like, okay, sure, I'll see you uh, in a minute. And so I come back down. I'm trying to, like, talk some sense into my family members that want to stay behind. Like, why are you worried about these car- carnal things? Why are you, there was something in me that knew that up the steps was something greater. So I didn't know what it was exactly, but I'm like, why are you worried about irrelevant things right now? Your hair is fine. You look good. Like, let's go. But they were like, no, they they, they were just other things they felt they had to take care of here. And so I'm like, okay. So then we, um, they go and sit down at some table. Now, I don't know where this table comes from, but all of a sudden it's like a, a room a, um, that where we on the path that we just came from that turned into a cafeteria. And I'm trying to figure out where did this room come from? So we go to, uh, they go sit down. I am not sitting down. I see, <laughs> I see, because uh, your girl's single, <laughs> I see um, uh, several different men. Now, one is somebody who is a former friend from school and so I'm like oh hey what's up I first recognize their voice before I see their face and they're going up the steps and so I'm like now that sound like so and so and he turned around he like hey I tell you what's up so he comes back in the steps gives me a hug trying to find out like why what are you doing like why are you not you know on your way up with us like and I saw I'm like oh no I'm coming like you know just explaining to him the situation so you're like all right I'll see you inside I said, I'll be in a minute. Don't worry. I'll be in a minute. So he's like, okay. So he goes up. Um, and, and so I go and I see these two other guys. Now, one guy, um, looks like a very tall basketball player, handsome, I mean, gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, 
and he's eyeing me and he has a beautiful smile and he's gentle. He's kind. He's, you know, uh, going around to some of the other players, helping them out as well. That was on the team. And then, you know, saying I could hear like some of the things he's saying to them that's nice and kind. And he's also like he went and helped somebody like somebody wanted something uh, to eat or whatever. And so he's like, I'll, I'll get it for you. So he goes and serves the people just just happy and easy. And I'm like, oh, I like this, dude. <laughs> so then there's another guy who's standing at one of the um, the cafeteria, not not cafeteria. He was standing at one of the counters. That's what it's called, counters, at one of the um, the the window depots where you get your food. And so he's standing there, and this guy is a shorter guy, and he looks he looks at me. And somehow I know his thoughts. I know he wants me, but I am not interested in him and I'm not attracted to him. So I don't want anything to do with him. But he has he has it in his mind and he's dead focused at me of you're gonna be mine. I'm look you're you're I don't care what you want, you're gonna be mine. And there's this uncomfortable feeling that I suddenly sense about him. So I'm I, I try not to stare at him too long because I don't want him to even think for one second even though he's already thinking it, they're like, I'm interested in him. I'm not. So I go back to eyeing, uh, f flirting eyeing, because <laughs> I am not that person to just walk up to somebody. So I'm giving him a look like, you know, hi. <laughs> Y'all can laugh with me now. And the um, and so the tall ba basketball player comes over me, but before he gets to me, or rather as he is making his way towards me to speak to me, so is the shorter uh, supposed to be basketball player as well. And this guy is really short. I mean, like, don't look like you're supposed to be on nobody's basketball team at all. And so they're both coming towards me. And the tall guy gets to me first. And he's very polite. He's very kind. He's very gentle. And so uh, and he's the one I was interested in. So I'm talking to him. And all of a sudden, weirdly enough, this other guy who, I'm, who I've been mentioning comes up. And starts saying some things. And I'm going to read exactly what he said. Because um, it was just like so bizarre. That somebody would even. Talk like that to somebody. Like it was like what? What are you talking about? And so he says. To the tall player. Who first came over to me. Um, he says. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, he says, um, oh my gosh, like, where is my notes? Sorry, y'all, give me one second. Um, anyway, he says something to the effect of, like, um, she's mine and you can't, uh, you can't have her, um, She's mine. You can't have her. Uh, I'll. Um, okay, I found it. I'll hit you so hard in the knees, boy. I can take you. I have a black belt in karate and can take you. So step off because she's mine. I saw her first. This is the shorter guy talking to the taller guy. <laughs> and and the taller guy is also mus muscular. The shorter guy is not. So it's, it's, it, 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 it's so weird to look at this, this combination. It's almost like looking at... Um, if I can use this example just to give you a visual, not to say that these are the real people, but to give you a visual, it's almost looking, it's almost as if looking at somebody like a, a Larry Bird or a Shaquille O'Neal, who is super, super tall or a Yao Ming who's super, super tall. And then a Kevin Hart <laughs> trying to, you know, talk back at them or even a Danny DeVito trying to talk back at them like, yeah, I'm gonna knock you out. I'm gonna knock you. And it's like. If you don't get your little stuff out of here. So that's the dynamic. That's how tall the person was who I was interested in and how, you know, short, so to speak, the person was who who wanted to come in and try to attack me. And so the person, the tall person says these lyrics that, from, that I knew from a song. And I was like, okay, I still don't understand what is happening in front of me. It's not making any sense. Though I recognize the beat of the song playing behind in, in the background, it's a song called Count 'em Remix by Brandon Lake featuring KB. 
Go listen to that on your own time. It's an amazing song. I love it. Um, and so anyway, I hear the beat start for a uh, Brandon Lake song for the remix. And so I'm like, okay. And then literally the tall, the tall guy who I was interested in, words start coming from him, but I don't recall ever hearing a sound. But I literally hear him say somehow, the, the lyrics that KB says, which I'm about to read to you, he says, where were you the day the foundation was laid? Talking rings. I'm the one that got the planets arranged. Have you ever spoke to nothing and nothing obeyed? Oh, you not entertained? Listen, just listen to the angels. Watch what they do and you do the same. And so I'm sitting here still trying to figure out, y'all, what the heck is going on? Why are you speaking KB? And, and I know that KB's rap lyrics is, is basically standing in the place of the Lord, standing in the place of God Almighty to say, like, where, like, I am the creator. Where were you? Um, and so he's, so, so it's in this moment where I'm starting to realize, okay, I think this is deeper than I, than, than just two men starting to fight over me. Like it's something more going on here and I'm trying to figure out what it is. All of a sudden, as I'm trying to figure out what's going on, um, and, and the rest of KB's rap goes on as, and I'll get to the rest of his lyrics in a minute, in a moment. I then see the, um, the shorter guy literally like start punching at the right knee of the taller guy. And I'm like, what? And when I say, so the taller guy falls back on his back and he's holding his knee, uh, in, in pain or, or, or it looks like pain. And the short guy is just continuing. I know it's weird, y'all, but just listen. The short guy is continuing to punch the knee, weird enough. I don't know why the knee, but the right knee of this particular tall basketball player. So I'm trying to figure out why are you attacking? What is going on? So then I have a thought and I'm like, oh, well, maybe the tall guy is the one that's the, the evil one. And the short guy is just kind of protecting me. But then I remember the feeling that I felt from the short guy when he was looking at me that made me feel very uncomfortable. So I know, okay, no, 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 that's the wrong thought. Uh-uh, this is, no, this person is the enemy. And on top of that, this tall person came over very, like a gentle giant, willing to serve and, and be kind and, and respectful and whatever. Even the way he handled his the other players on the team, the way he handled everybody else that was in the room, he was kind to them. He was gentle to them. So I'm like, wait a minute. There's a this, there's a disparity here. The tall guy is kind and gentle. The this, this shorter guy is ferocious and mean and antagonizing and and rude and obnoxious and arrogant, like all these fleshly things. So again, I realized, no, this person that's the short guy is the enemy. This person, the tall guy, is 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 the savior, so to speak. Like he's the 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 good guy, and so I kind of like say a prayer, like I hope the good guy wins, or, or just kind of like egging the the good guy on. And suddenly, like it was in my heart, like I, I'm not speaking any words, but I'm but because my mind shifted from the the negative thought, kind of like resisting the devil, he will flee, as that scripture says resisting the negative thought that was trying to make me think that the smaller evil guy was the one that was good and the tall guy was one that was bad. Soon as I shifted my mind, I literally saw, it was almost as if the scene rewound itself in some way or, or, or reshaped itself in some way. And I see like, kind of like if you ever watched uh, um back in the day or even with, the rewind setting now, if you rewind something, you see kind of like things play out in backwards motion. And so what happens is the, the short guy backs away, the tall guy stands back up and, and then it kind of backs, backs up a little bit to them both walking towards me. So they're both walking towards me again. And I'm sitting trying to figure out what just happened in front of my eyes. How do I see this just rewind itself? And as I'm seeing it rewind itself, um, and, and then replay again, the tall guy comes back up again. He did the same speech before, as I said, that KB's lyrics, 
where we, when the short guy steps up to him again with with this you know hateful speech and and trying to antagonize him into a fight and the tall guy says again where were you the day the foundation was laid talking rings i'm the one that got the planets arranged have you ever spoke to nothing and nothing obeyed oh you not entertained just listen to the angels watch what they are doing and you do the same so then the rest of the lyrics start to pour out as i see the tall guy take three shots and knock the short guy cold out and the rest of the lyrics says um so after it, it after it ends with um watch what the angels are doing and you do the same it says it's not competitive stop the comparison so i'm hearing kb's lyrics as the tall basketball player is knocking out in three quick blows to this short guy and he says, it's not competitive. Stop the comparison. When heaven thunders, every one of the seven wonders that we've got are relevant. Not as next to him. Still reigns in the spots you've never been. He pours oceans like popping beverages. There's a God on top of Everest. You not impressed with this? And then I hear Brandon Lakes like cheer and chant as the, 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 the short guy falls out on the third blow at the end of that, that and it's like, oh, <laughs> and everybody's clapping, even in the room, everybody's clapping and cheering. And then I hear this like boom, boom, as you're hearing the beat, if you go listen to the song. And then it says, you are the Lord, holy. And in the tall basketball player, and at that moment when it says, when Brandon Lake says, you are the Lord, holy, lifts up his hands in victory, you know, like a fighter would, like who won the round, who won the, 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 uh, the battle, the the you know knockout punch or whatever and it is in that moment that i realized oh this is not again just some regular random tall handsome guy that i'm interested in um that i thought was attractive this is the lord in front of me defeating satan who was trying to come up against me and so wake up and at first um i keep hearing the song count them remix that I was just uh, quoting you by uh, K by Brandon Lake featuring KB. I keep still hearing the song and I say a prayer as I always do. Every time I wake up from a vision or a dream, I say a prayer because I want to make sure that not only discernment, is it really God you that gave me that vision, gave me that dream? And if it is, then help me remember and recall everything I need to write down. And that's a strategy for you out there. For those of you out there who maybe have a prophetic gift or you don't know your prophetic gift, or even if you don't have a prophetic gift, but you you believe that God is speaking to you or you, or you have some dreams that you don't quite understand, write them down, pray about it. God will give you revelation for it. And so that's what I did. I finished praying. I wrote this vision down and then I um, went on my morning walk. God sent me on my morning walk. And, and on my morning walk, I'm listening to the song again because I just couldn't get it out my spirit. Like count on remix, you know, now one of my favorite songs and I'm just still listening to it. And as I'm listening to it, I am smiling because I just continue as we get to KB's part. I just smile because I'm like, wow, the enemy tried to knock me down, tried to even make me for a split second think that he was the good guy and and that Jesus was the bad guy um, because things, uh, because of whatever. And then here I am, like, seeing this battle play out. And it was amazing. And it just made me smile to, to see that God loves you so much. I said all that to say, to tell you the vision, to tell you that God loves you so much that it doesn't matter even for a split second, if you made a bad decision, if you made a bad, if even if you had a bad thought, like I did, that came to your mind where you for one second believed the lie of the enemy, you can repent. You could turn away from just as I did in that vision, turn my mind away from that thought to realize, wait a minute, let me test the fruit because that's what Jesus tells us to do in Matthew chapter seven. He tells us, and let me go to that scripture for you. In Matthew chapter seven, he tells us how to um, how to judge people. You don't judge people um, by the outer appearance because uh, because God's only way that can look at the heart. But how you actually will be able to, uh, in a sense, gain access to the heart is by looking at their fruit, like looking at their actions. And so it says it this way in Matthew 7, verse 15, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. That is by the way they act. 
I want to pause right there because that is so pivotal, crucial, and important. How you can tell if it is the enemy standing in front of you is, or, 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 or if it's somebody that the enemy sent to come against you is how are they acting? I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in conversations with some people who were the aggressor, just like in this vision, who were the aggressor, who immediately just came up and started, you know, antagonizing or or saying mean things or in, in, in a mean look look on their face. And and they're just, you know, rough with what they're saying and and harsh with their comments and judgmental with their comments. And and they claim that, oh, it's 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 constructive criticism, but it's really just criticism. It's really just criticism. You're, you're not giving me no, no, no grace, no nothing. You're just putting your two cents and criticizing me for what I'm doing or what I did or what I said or whatever. And and how many times that I've had to be in, in moments like that, where just like the tall giant, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, first of all, why are you so aggressive towards me? Or why are you speaking so negatively or so, so mean or spirited or judgmental towards me, um, criticizing me, but, but then want to smile my face and say that it's love or, or that you have affection towards me. No, that's not love, baby. No. And how many times I have to be in those situations where I've had to speak God's word or, or, or even stay in prayer to stay in God's perfect peace so that I did not succumb to that person's um, actions. And so this is how we judge people to know, are they really sent by God? Are they really speaking God's word? That's not to say that people will be perfect. No. Because people can be sent by God and still make mistakes, still have a, a, a bad thought for a split second or a moment as I did in a vision. It didn't make me bad. It just meant that in that moment, I believed the lie of the enemy for one split second. But thankfully, because God's word is more prominent in me, it was easy for me to look at the action, look at the fruit and see, wait a minute, hold on. Who's the aggressor here? Who's the one that came up starting trouble while everybody else was just having a peaceful conversation? Who's the one that before this other person even walked up to me, I could hear the, the, their words and their mind and, and, and feel the presence of their heart that was evil towards me. No, you're the one that's the enemy. You're the one that wants to come against me, not this person. So God's word backs even the vision that I just shared with you. Like you can tell if a person is really for you or not based on their actions, based on the fruit. Not that they'll always get things right or that they're perfect. No, but if it's more bad outweighing the good, and it says it this way, verse 17, a good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that produce, that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Just look at their actions. Look at their actions. Look at their words. As I said in this vision, just as I had to had to for a moment. Same thing with going back to the friends, old friends versus new friends. The new friends were there to welcome me and there to encourage me, there to say, I'm going to save a seat for you. We're, we're waiting for you. Don't be long. The old friends were the ones who abandoned me, who rejected me, who um, kicked me while I was down. And then when they saw that it was a time of celebration, Showed up like, hey, what's up? Get hugs and kisses. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> hold on now. <laughs> what's going on? Because you you weren't there when there were tears. So why are you here when there's a harvest? Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. So <laughs> I wanted to give you this word because God gave it to me. He was speaking to me so much this morning that I am just full of joy because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And it really is my strength today that even though I've been through so much warfare and even though the enemy is trying to knock me down every chance he can get because he hates that I come on here and that I encourage you and that, that I disciple people privately, that I've even seen some people transition onto Jesus, but I was at least a part of the disciple, discipleship journey to help them get to Jesus. He's mad. He's mad because, because heaven has victory. Heaven rejoices over the one that's found. And so heaven has victory because of the ministry that God does through me, his power that works through me. And so Satan, again, continue to try to come at me every step of the way. But I'm so thankful of God's promises, which is I want to share some of them with you today because I've been talking about it all week 
of God's promises. And, and this is just some, again, you got to read the Bible for yourself because there's over a thousand promises from God. But this scripture is one of my favorites. I actually learned how to pray this scripture and how to cover myself and my family through this scripture um, from my spiritual mentor. And this is why it's important to have somebody who can hold you accountable and also pray you through situations because they've been through experiences themselves. So they are able to be there to help you every step of the way. And so my spiritual mentor told me like when she was in warfare, this was the scripture that she prayed. And so she taught it to me. Uh, and I don't mean told it to me like I couldn't read it myself, but she taught me how she prayed it. And then I have incorporated that in my own life. And so one of the scriptures that I want to read to you today in its entirety, because it's a prayer uh, not only over your life and over what you're going through, but it's also a promise from God, several promises from God of how he will be there for you every step of the way when you turn to him. And so Psalms 91, reading from the New Living Translation, goes as such. And take us about what are y'all? Uh, excuse me. Okay. It goes as such. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you these evils will not touch you just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished if you make the lord your refuge if you make the most high your shelter no evil will conquer you no plague will come near your home for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will, I, I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Go Study and meditate on that scripture for yourself day and night. Pray it over your life just as I do every single day because it is a blessing and it empowers you and strengthens you and reminds you of, excuse me, some of his promises for your life. But you got to get into the word for yourself. I can sit here and read it to you all day long, but it is more powerful, more potent and better if you start reading it for yourself because then you learn to study it because we learn by repetition. So as you continue to study it every day, you then continue, or as you can continue to read it every day, you're in a, in a cycle studying it every day. You're meditating on the words day and night. And in and, and you doing that, not only is it planting a seed when you first heard it, like I just did, I planted a seed in you, but then it continues to grow that seed as you continue to study and meditate on it day and night. And so this scripture, as you, as I wrote, read it to you, you see that through the vision that's what happened with me, that it didn't matter who fell against me, who was around me, who was for me, who was not for me, that God sent angels, which was the girlfriends, angels to to be there, to cheer me up, to strengthen me on the journey, to, to save a seat for me, which I'm going to get to the next scripture, uh, you know, in a minute that talks about having a seat saved for you, but to save a seat for me, to prepare the way for me, to make sure that I got to my destination. I got to where the steps were, where I was supposed to be safe and sound in one piece. But then also, even when I got deterred from, from family members and, and, and trying to bring my family along, because um, we are meant to make disciples and it doesn't matter who they are or what they currently believe in. They're, the Bible talks about them as lost sheep. And so God is being slow, not for no reason of, of Jesus Christ's second coming, but because he wants everyone to repent. Because the Bible says that at the, at the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he died for their sins. And so even my family members that 
that I'm praying for and, and petitioning to God for and warring for in the spiritual realm on their behalf, which is another reason why the enemy is fighting me, like in that vision, because he doesn't, he didn't want me to be sitting there still, still back there praying and trying to get my family to come up the steps and, and come up to the upper room. And the Bible talks about the upper room is where the, the, you receive the Holy Spirit. He, he didn't want that. That's why he made it clear. Like, oh, I'm gonna come after her. I'm, I'm coming after you. Yeah, she mine. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't about to let her go. And, and, and it's like, no, but Jesus was there. As it says in verse 14 of Psalm 91, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. There was the, the flirtation, if you will, there was me giving permission to God, so to speak, though he didn't really need it, to, to, to Jesus say, oh, oh I, I want you. <laughs> I, I want you in my life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can come on in. Come on in, you know. And so he says, I will protect those who trust in my name. That's exactly what, what, what happened. Why he had to stand up in front of me. The, the, the warfare wasn't mine. Just as with you, the warfare is not yours. I know it may seem like it's yours because it's coming up against you. But you got to stand in faith and trust and believe. The Bible says, taste and see the Lord is good. He will hand your enemy in your hands. You just have to take a stand of faith to believe that this mountain, this enemy, this Goliath can be handed into my hands, as David said. Because you are coming against not just me as the person, as the child of the most high God, but you're coming against God himself. And so he will hand you into my hands. And that's exactly what happened. The enemy fell at my feet, as the scripture says, because Jesus knocked him out. His word stands true. I've seen it time and time again in the spiritual realm where I have been under attack I've, I've been mentioning it all week different visions and dreams that i've had where i've been in spiritual realm been under attack by the enemy and time and time again god sent his angels his, my way either to protect me and get me to the safe space or he came himself like in this vision and dealt with the enemy directly to say touch not my anointed ones that's what the bible says and so before I get to this other scripture, I hear, I hear the Lord saying to tell you about this other vision that, that correlates with Psalm 91 as well. And so it's another vision that happened a while ago. Um, I think back in, um, it was a while ago. I, I can't remember the exact date. I have to look it up. But nevertheless, in the vision, um, I am in, uh, I'm in my city in, in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I am on the outskirts if you will like you know um the city limits so to speak so i'm i'm coming from uh parts of philadelphia and i'm turning into like a suburb another um another district or jurisdiction or whatever and so as i'm turning there the when i'm on the street that i'm on is is um bright and sunny but i hear on the radio as i'm driving that there's a storm coming and so I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm looking up. It's bright and sunny. Where the storm supposed to be coming at? I, I don't see no storm. And so I continue driving and I turn the corner. And soon I turn the corner and I turn into this next, uh, this next district, this suburb or whatever um, of Philadelphia. Then I suddenly hit the storm. I hit the warfare. And literally it was like day to night. Like on the road I was on was bright, sunny day. Like it is right now. Um, it's 1014 right now. As I'm as I'm giving you this message, and so it is bright, sunny outside right now. But somehow, when I turn the corner, um, to, you know, from one street literally to the next, it is like almost as if it's midnight, dark. The lights, the, some of the street lights are on, not all, but some of the street lights are on. But it's pretty much dark and red, like a red hue that's all around. And I'm trying to figure out what. Okay, was this the storm I'm supposed to be driving into? Like, okay, but I can't, some way, somehow, I'm not able to turn the car back around. And I see that there is warfare going on around me. There is gang violence going on around me. And I'm like, what is going on? I see these, the, it, it's a gang in all red. And they're all around me wreaking havoc on the neighbors and the people around. So I'm, I'm, I'm suddenly out of the car now and I'm walking up and I'm trying to help people or whatever. And I see this, the leader of this red gang and he is in this dark, dark red that almost looks black. 
ensemble and he is he has his guns and he tells the other people as well point their guns all at me and so now all of these um these people which were demons are pointing their guns at me and they have these ak-47s point directly at me and all of a sudden before i can even say anything because there's other there's other soldiers that are around me that um are also fighting off the, the warfare so they come out the cut and they literally engulf me in a circle. So like if this was me, the microphone in the middle, they engulf me in a circle. And there is these like black op type of uh, soldiers. And and the, there's one that stands in front of me. And his name is Michael. I know his name. At, I, I don't know how I knew his name in that moment, but I knew his name was given to me by the Holy Spirit. His name is Michael. And he says, you will not touch her. And so... The the uh, and so the enemy says, "I want her dead. I, she's wreaked enough havoc. I want her dead." But he makes it very clear: you will not touch her. You have to get through us first, and you won't do that. You will not touch her. And so, then I hear this voice in my heart that says, "Take a step back." And so, as I take a step back, the Soldiers that are around me that Michael is leading, this army that's around me that Michael is leading, are backing away with me as well. And as I'm backing away, the enemy first starts trying to move, but but then we stop. Because Michael stands up even taller, like, what did I say? Don't you take another step. And so the enemy doesn't. He, he stays right there. And we back away, and, and all of these... All the, this army of soldiers around me all have their guns and weapons pointing at all the other, the enemy's uh, w um, gang that's around us. We back away down, basically kind of like down the block that I had just turned from down towards the beginning of that block. And we turn. And as we turn, this white cloaked angel comes to me named Gabriel. And he's a messenger. He says, I'm going to show you the way out. And so he says, follow me. And I follow him and he shows me the way out. And we turn into this, uh, before we get into this bright building, there's still some more warfare there because there's this this evil woman that's trying to tempt me into into um, into helping her out. Like she's pretending that she needs help. But but Gabriel says, no, don't, don't listen to that. Don't, don't even go try to help. That's not, um, that's a trick of the enemy. And so I said, okay, so I stay focused. And she gets mad, tries to come, come against me. But um, this bright light flashes from Gabriel and it, it like just submerged like they like scatter like roaches, so to speak. And so we walk down this bright white tunnel and then I wake up like this bright, not not bright, white tunnel, this bright, white room. And then he says some things to me um, and then I woke up. And I wanted to share that, or rather God wanted me to share that with you, because again, as we see in Psalms 91, the warfare may try to come up against you. Even at night, you may see the fiery darts from the enemy. It says in verse, um, verse, uh, verse six, do not judge the disease that stalks in darkness or disaster that strikes at midday. Uh, but excuse me, before that, verse five, do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. The enemy wanted to terrify me with that scene because it, it is terrifying. If if you're if you're you know being surrounded by a bunch of people that are dressed in in, in blood red and evil looks in their eyes, I mean black eyes, black eyes, blood red gear, and then and then Satan had on this like really really dark tar black ensemble that was kind of reddish black. And, and dark black eyes and the all pointing guns at you. Yeah, you're going to be afraid. But again, God took me back to the scripture to remind me that I will be there to protect you. I will send my angels to shelter you, to make sure that you will not even hurt your foot on a stone. And needless to say, as I'm backing up, I can't see behind me, but I didn't hurt myself. I didn't fall. I didn't trip. I didn't hurt myself. The angels ensured that I got to my destination of safety. God is saying today that some of you may, out, may be out there dealing with warfare in your life. Things are not going right. And, and the warfare may not seem like the visions that I'm explaining. It may come in the form of people. That's why I said they were these were people. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that they were demons 
in the vision or when I woke up. But in the moment, they are just people. I'm just seeing them as people. I, I don't, when I'm in a spiritual room, a lot of times I don't know that it's a vision. It feels like it's, I'm awake, you know, because the spiritual room is more real than the natural room, God told me. So I'm like li literally living in another, uh, like, like another realm or if you will. So, uh, I don't know that these are spirits in that moment until the Holy Spirit reveals it to me. Or, or, or until, like I said, in that moment, like I'm able to test the, the spirits of those people by looking at their actions. And you may be dealing with the same thing where there's people who got, who, who, excuse me, who the enemy has sent in your life with evil intentions. Look at their actions because you don't have the power to look at their heart. There's a song that's coming to my mind right now by Transformation Worship called Look at My Fruit. I love that song. It just came out a few weeks or so ago. Um, but that's what it's talking about. Look at the fruit. As I said to you earlier, Matthew 7, go read it for yourself. Look at the fruit. You can judge by their actions to see, are you really somebody sent by God? Or is every action from you aggressive and negative? And Galatians 5, Galatians 5 breaks it down like this. So it's for those that need to know, like what are things that are of flesh or, or what are things that are of Satan that are sinful, it breaks it down like this, the difference between what is the spiritual. So you know that if it's fruit by the Holy Spirit or if it's fruit by Satan. I am giving y'all strategy. It's, it's it's coming to me as God has given it to me. So y'all need to be writing this down, okay? Maybe pause, get a pen and paper, write this down so you can have it for yourself. Mark the scriptures down so you can read them and study them for yourself. Because the scriptures make it clear of how you can test the fruit. See, God will always give you strategy. He's not going to just give you his word and say, just, just have faith, but not tell you how to have that faith. To, to be still or to stand and, and believe that this mountain will come down or that this Goliath will be given into your hands. Your enemy will be your footstool and not give you strategy on how that's actually applicable, how that works. So I'm giving it to you right now and it's in his word. Write it down. Go back and read it and study it for yourself. Galatians chapter 5, starting at the 19th verse says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. So if you're standing in front of somebody or, you're, or you have people in your life and you want to judge... Are these people really for me? Are they really sent by the Holy Spirit or are they sent by Satan or another evil spirit? Like, look, how do I look at their fruit? This is how. If they're sent by Satan, you will see these traits and characteristics in them. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition dissension division envy drunkenness wild parties and other sins like these let me tell you again as i had before that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of god that ties into matthew 7 when jesus christ said that there will be many who claim that they know me claim that they've done things for me claim that they were followers of me but they really were living under the authority of satan and he would say i never knew you get out of here Go away with weeping and gnashing of teeth. Go serve your true father, which is Satan, because it's not Jesus. He makes it very, very clear. But see, here's how you can tell if it's somebody who was actually sent by the Holy Spirit. And again, none of this says that they're, they're, these people are perfect. You're, you're not going to hear me say um, the things that the Holy Spirit produces out of someone that is perfection. No, we are being perfected every day. As we walk out our salvation and our obedience with Christ Jesus, but we're not perfect. So this produces, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's another um, version that also says long suffering. There is no law against these things. So when you see, that's how you judge. When you see somebody living by the fruits of the spirit, you should see these things embodied for the most part, for the majority in their life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Like I said back in the first vision, how I was able to decipher, wait a minute, 
No, this person actually is the evil one is because he's the one that came up with dissension. He's the one that came up with jealousy in his heart. He's the one that came up with envy and trying to be destructive and, 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 and having lustful thoughts or whatever. He's the one that, that had all of this. But then the tall basketball player is the one that was, that, was, that was gentle, that was loving, that was serving people, that was patient, that was kind, that had self-control. This is how you tell the people that, that are in your life. Are, are they really living by Jesus Christ? Do they really have the fruits of the Holy Spirit in their heart, in their life? Or are they serving somebody else? Are they serving Satan? Do they line up with the word of the Lord? This is how we judge. Do they line up with the word of the Lord? Not, not, not the words they speak, their actions. Actions speak louder than words. I don't know if you ever heard it before, but it is true. Actions speak louder than words. Look at people's actions. And so before I get out of here, Psalms 23, this is a scripture of mine um, that I learned as a kid. Most of us that grew up in church have learned this, this scripture as a kid. Um, but I also want to share this and give you another promise. Speak this word over your life to also give a little bit more context as well of that first vision, a little bit of the second vision as well that God shared with me. So Psalms 23, reading from the New King James Version says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are more promises from God that, if he is your Lord, if you make him your shepherd, if you make him your, your, um, if you make him not just your savior, but your guide throughout your life, the person who you turn to the most, not your friends, not your, not even your loved ones, your husband, wife, whatever, the person you turn to the most, he says, these are my promises. I will protect you. I will guard you. And because I'm a king, because I'm seated in heavenly places with, with the Father God, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Now, I know, I know, I know, baby, I know. We don't like to think that there are people that we love that are our family or our friends who can then become enemies. But the Bible says it like this. You are not fighting against people or, or flesh and bone, but against spirits and principalities. So all of us, are spirits wrapped in flesh. That's why it says judge by their actions. Because it's it's either one or two spirits living in you. It's either the Holy Spirit that comes from God Almighty, Adonai, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, his spirit, Yeshua HaMashiach, his spirit, or it is the spirit of Satan. It's only one or two living in people. And so... When you're dealing with, with family members, with friends, with even somebody that you're in a relationship with, not all the time are you, um, as much as you may want them to, to live a, a blameless life, where they may even say that they're believers, but their actions will show who they really believe. Their actions will show how they live their life. Like I said in my vision, and I didn't tell you what happened before, because uh, there were some things that happened before we got to that particular path where the park was at. Um, but there was some, some that's, I would say some strife that happened before, some warfare that happened beforehand with uh, some of the family members. And then we get on this path. And, and then I encounter these two angels who greeted me like friends. And, and they then helped guide me, um, leading me and, and people that I'm with. And, you know, and then all these new, old, I mean, old friends come up and it's like, what are you doing here? At the table where my old friends were, those family members that that caused strife with me, that talked about me behind my back, that that judged me, that ridiculed me, that mocked me, that kicked me while I was down, and those who didn't want to go to the top, those who, like I said, gave the excuse of, "Oh, I got my hair I need to be done, and I got some other things to take care of down here," like I, I ain't ready to go there yet. 
it's those people that that are looking for the things in this world. They they want the cheers and the applause and the approval and and the likes and and the lifestyles, uh, uh, uh the the wild partying and and the fun that what they think is fun in this world. They want to hold on to the carnality things of this world. And so Jesus Christ said. As he said in his word, and he showed it to me in the vision. Well, now I got to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. I got to show them the victory in your life, how I'm defeating your enemy right in front of their face. They got to see the victory that I'm doing in your life. And then, and then, though I pray that 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 um, God's mercy be done and, and that salvation is received in my family, I had to go ahead. I had to go ahead of them. While they still sat at the table, like I said, the, the vision ends with me leaving and following Jesus as he leads me to the, the stairs in the room I was supposed to be in all along. The one that I gave up for in that, in that immediate moment when the angels were leading me there, when, when those new friends I was saying were leading me there. The ones that I gave up, that I gave up for in that moment for the sake of a family. And sometimes, and that's a, a word out there for somebody that needs to hear it. Sometimes you got to let your family go. Sometimes you got to leave your family behind. Doesn't mean you stop loving them. Doesn't mean you stop praying for them. But sometimes you got to realize that they're blocking your blessing. That they are stopping the victory from being won in your life. Because you're trying to drag people along who are not yet ready to go on the journey. It doesn't mean that God doesn't have a place prepared for them. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want to save them. It doesn't mean they will never be saved. Keep praying for their salvation. But you got to move forward in the direction that God is taking you on, trusting and believing that they're his children first before they were your family members. Before they were your children, before they were your grandchildren, before before they were your, your cousins and your aunts and uncles and your brothers and your sisters or your mom and your dad or your grandparents, before they were your family. They were God's children first. And so you have got to trust that as I move forward, focusing on God, I talked about this a little bit before in the, in the message I talked about where I said um, yesterday, windshield and rearview mirrors, how to um, look ahead or move forward clearly or see things clearly. So if you missed that message, go check it out. Um, God says, keep your eyes focused because when you look behind, you might get caught up in a trap. Where the enemy wants to try to devour you, because we learned about yesterday in, in the word that that the enemy the, the tries to tries to tries to prowl around, excuse me, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The enemy wants to try to get you to trap you up, to still kill and destroy, and block your blessings, block you from receiving God's greatest gift of salvation for you, and block you from receiving God's greatest gift of His power, of His Holy Spirit, of His blessings, of of the feast that He has prepared for you. A place with your name on it. But you got to take a stand of faith and say, you know what? I will keep moving forward. And if that means that I have to say ashes to ashes and dust to dust metaphorically on some um, physically, maybe in some relationships, maybe it's a, a, you, you dating somebody that God says, uh uh, that ain't it. That ain't the one. Let, you know, bro, man, let that girl go. Sister girl, let that dude go. He, he ain't it. She ain't the one. I got a godly one for you. I have a Proverbs 31 for you. I got your bow ass for you. You just got to wait on God. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar high on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. And as Dante Bo says, that's what happens when you wait. <laughs> you know, I can't sing like him, baby, but you know, in my heart I do. <laughs> you know, but you, you, when you wait on the Lord, you get stronger. You see his victory. You see how he defeats your enemy. And you see how easy he makes it for you to walk the path clear. And like I said, Amos chapter, chapter three, verse three says, how can two walk together unless they agree upon a direction? Sometimes they may not agree with the direction in that moment. Excuse me. Like I said, there were some people in my family that had access to their room. They had access to the stairway. But they weren't ready yet. They wanted to keep holding on to the things of this earth. They wanted the cheers and applause and, and the and and the the car, the carnal things that, that excites them in this earth, in this world. And God talks about it in James chapter 1. Where he's where he mentions how like you cannot be double minded. You know, you you can't you can't you have to choose this day whom you will serve, basically. 
Joshua says that in Joshua chapter 24, like choose the day whom you will serve. Will you serve the God of your ancestors, Adonai, Yahweh? Will you serve the one true living God of Israel? Or do you want the God of the things of this world? Satan is ha, is the prince of the power of the airways. He's a, he's a, he has um, rulership, if you will, over the things of this world. That's why he taints you and tempts you with the things of this world. And so you have a decision to make. Do I want the things of this world and what it has to offer me? Or do I want God's kingdom, what he has to offer me? It says it this way. Um, verse, verse six. But when you ask him, this is asking God, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. That's James chapter 1, uh, verse 6 through 8. If you want God, go after God. But you got to go after God with everything in you. That means forsaking the things of this world, sacrificing relationships. Baby, I can't tell you how much I've had to suffer and endure for my faith. How much for the for the sake of being obedient to God's assignment on my life. How many people I've had to distance myself from family members as well. How many people and, and, and friends that had to fall off, as I said earlier, that, that couldn't go with me any further? How many relationships and, and even, even right now being single, like, you know, how, how much I've had to put on hold for the sake of faith and being loyal to what God says for me to do in my assignment in my time, in, in my time right now. And a lot of people hear ye, hear me. Many of you out there may be listening right now. And you may be struggling because you feel like God is telling you to give up something, to let go of something. It may be a dream that you felt like, but I really wanted it. But you have to decide to choose this day whom you will serve. You have to decide to adopt that if you say so principle that I talked about before um, on, on a podcast episode, Ages of Revival podcast, streaming everywhere. Go listen and check it out. It comes out every week. But, um, you know, Peter had that mindset that whatever you say, God, I'm going to do. Jesus Christ, when he was here on earth, had that mindset of, I don't want this cup of suffering, God, but if it is your will, then I want your will over my will. So if you say so, Lord, I will do it. And we have to adopt that same mindset that says, whatever God asks me to sacrifice or to give up, because he's a good God and because I know that everything He, everything in this earth, he owns. And so whatever he takes away, he has the power of resurrection. He has the power to duplicate, to multiply if need be. To do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could have asked or think. And so if he's telling me to give it up right now, then trust that he has better up ahead. Or he has the power to resurrect it if 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 need be. That's that's the Abraham blessing. Abraham chose that if God you tell me to, to sacrifice Isaac, the son that you promised me, then I'm gonna be obedient. And 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 because God knew Abraham's heart. And God knew the promise, the covenant that he made with Abraham. He was not going to allow Abraham to actually kill his son, Isaac. Because while they were on their way up one part of the mountain, he had a ram on, up the way on the other part of the mountain. So that when it got to the point where he was going to stop Abraham from sacrificing Isaac to God, he was going to say, there's a ram right there that's, that's caught in the bush, caught in the thicket. Go get the ram and sacrifice the ram on his altar. Because now, and he, he literally says to Abraham, now I know that you will not withhold anything I ask. And that's what God wants us all to get to. Get to a point where you will not withhold anything he asks of you. That whatever he says, you are willing to say, if you say so, God, you, you want me to not get married right now? If you say so. You want me to not date right now and, and let you heal my heart? If you say so. You want me to um, distance myself from family members because they're toxic right now or or because they're trying to come up against or or block the blessing or stop my progression moving forward. If you say so. If you want me to stop hanging out with these friends because we no longer agree on the direction that we're going anymore. If you say so. You got if God, if you want me to, to give up this job and, and, and be obedient to an assignment that you have for me, if you say so. God, you want me to move and, and move somewhere I've never been before, just like Abraham had to. 
if you say so. You got to get to that point where you say, you know what, if you say so. Because again, God's blessing, your call is bigger than your fall. And it may feel like that you're falling right now, that you're failing right now, that things are topsy-turvy in your life right now. And, 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 and it just seems like the uncertainty right now. But you have to adapt to the new normal that God is doing in your life. Because he says in Isaiah 43, verse 18, see, I'm doing a new thing in your life. He is going to lead you. He's going to guide you. I've given you tons and tons of scripture today that you need to go read and study on your own time because God has, has says, I have a promise for your life. It is bigger than you could have ever asked, thought of, or imagined, but it does require some sacrifice. It does require some obedience. And even if you may have a moment where you slip and fall in the moment of that will be the righteous fall seven times, but they get back up. They get back up. Because his angels are there to make sure that you get back up. And so it may feel like what God is asking you seems so big right now to give up. But understand that the call on your life, the assignment, the blessings that God wants to do in your life, through your life, the people that are attached to your future as you become who you need to be to steward well that next level. They're there waiting for you. You can't get stuck back here. You can't get stuck trying to hold on to people who are not yet ready to move forward. Just says I had to. Had to let myself let them go in that vision. I had to distance myself from them. I had to trust and listen to the messenger that was saying, hey, go here, go here, do this, do that. Take a stand of faith. Believe. Don't don't be afraid. Because his angels are around you protecting you. You may not can see them the way that I did in the vision, visions and dreams. But understand that, that God has safety around you. That's why what's coming against you is not completely destroying you. Though we may use these exaggerated terms like, oh, God is killing me. And, oh, it's the death of me or whatever. But, but you're not dead. You're not dead. It may suck. <laughs> it may be crushing you. It may be downright messy right now. But God is the only one that can take a messy situation, take, take the messiness of muddy things, use it as clay and shape you into the image that he wants you to be. He's the only one that can take a messy situation, put his power, put his breath, put his life on it, and then allow you to see things clearly. Take away the blindness and allow you to see things with new eyes. He's doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? And if you don't, ask God to show you and to help you to continue to take a stand of faith as he moves you towards that new thing that he's doing. He declares victory in your life. The song Count Em that I was talking about earlier by Brandon Lake featuring KB is about counting the blessings of the Lord over your life. Count how many times God has been a good God. Count how many times he has sustained people through the test of times. Count how many times. Go read another scripture to even, you know, count because it's written down. It's Hebrews chapter 11. It's called the great examples of faith. Count how many times God was faithful. And God came through on his promises. And even people who didn't receive their promises immediately or didn't receive their promises on this side of, of, of earth, they received it in heaven. But we just got to be willing to be obedient, to be steadfast, even through the tests and trials of time, the warfare, to know we are fighting a fixed fight. We don't fight with our hands. We don't fight with earthly weapons. We fight in the spiritual realm with our words of faith that we get through his word, which is the Bible. Because as I've been saying all week, those are the only words that will defeat the enemy's warfare in your life. Those are the only words that continue to allow God to show up in your life, to continue to allow Jesus, it, it, like in my situation with the angels, to keep fighting on your behalf. It is the word of God in your prayers. It says it in the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel, I think chapter nine when where daniel had prayed um because of a vision that he needed clarity on and and gabriel the angel the archangel gabriel lets him know he says hey it took 22 days for me to come to you but 
during that time, there was warfare going on in heaven. And Michael, again, Michael, the archangel, was, I had, God had sent Michael to come help me, to come and get you the answer, to come get you your blessing, to come get you what you've been praying for. So you may be praying some prayers right now. You're like, but I don't see it happening, God. And why is it taking so long? Because the enemy is, is revving up warfare in the spiritually heavenly realms, blocking your blessing. But it is out of your mouth, life and death flows. And so as long as you continue to speak blessings, speak God's word, speak his promises, speak life over your situation to not listen to the lies of the enemy and, and get defeated thinking that God's not going to come through. Then you continue to empower, if you will, empower the angels to keep fighting to get you what you have prayed for, to get you your blessing. Don't worry about how far you feel like how I'm excuse me, how deep you feel like you're, you're failing or, or falling right now or, or how bad things are right now. God says, I have already won the fight for you. I've already decreed and declared victory over your life. You will receive the blessing I have for you. Just be patient. Just continue to persevere. Just continue to read my word. Read my promises. I hear the Lord telling me to end with this scripture and wrap it up. So last scripture, Revelation 3, verse starting at the seventh verse. Reads as such, write this letter to the angel of the church at Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. This is Jesus speaking right now. I know all the things you do. And I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you have obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews or who are believers, but are not to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love because you have obeyed my command to persevere. I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon, Jesus says. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Be encouraged today. God got you. He knows you by name. You are fighting a fixed fight. All he asks you to do is stand and believe. Hear the call of the Lord on your life. Receive the call of the Lord. Receive his, his guidance, basically. Receive where he is leading you. The Bible says, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek his face and his righteousness. Live the way he told you to live. And everything else will be added unto you. So hear his call. Move forward. And God will come in and share a meal with you. Revelation 23, 20. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, open the door. I will come in and we'll, and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on the throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears must hear and listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. God has a word for you. God has a plan for your life. Just hold on to faith and believe that he's going to see you through. He's fighting the battles for you. You are in a fixed fight. You already have victory. Just declare it. Hey, I'm not the only one that has the name of Victoria. <laughs> That's my middle name. But even if you don't have the name of Victoria, just say victory is my name because I receive God's victory for my life. All right, guys, take care. Love you so much. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you. Show you his favor and give you shalom. Give us peace. Take care. Bye now.